My guest is Marika van Seil. She is a home education alumnus and student at Tux. Um, Marika, what are you studying and how did you decide on your course? I am studying applied mathematics and I have electives in computer science subjects. But the reason I started studying was I didn't really know what I wanted to study, but I knew that whatever I did, I'd want it to be useful. So I also knew I didn't want to become a teacher. I didn't want to go into the school system. I've got a lot of brave friends who is doing that and studying to become teachers, but that's not for me. So I thought if I learn to do something really well at varsity level, I can teacher in it. So maybe even get a higher educate diploma later after I've got my degree. So that's basically what's why I decided to study math. Your parents had a, a a slightly different goal in mind when they started home educating you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your home education journey? So my parents really wanted to sail around the world. My That was one of my dad's dreams growing up, you know, along with being an astronaut and all that, but uh, sailing around the world is slightly more realistic than becoming an astronaut in some senses. So when my mom married him, she knew he wanted to do this. So she geared herself up and she's like, okay, she's going to support him in this. And she started thinking about, okay, well, when the kids are on the boat, what's she going to do with them? And um, my dad was just like, oh, give them some books to read. And so she looked up on it and saw, well, there's actually a whole homeschool community. It's not just give them some books. It's actually there's their support and there's people who's also doing it and who's really passionate about it. So that really intrigued her and my dad loved the idea. And so we've always been homeschooled. We've never been, been in a school. But you went on the boat right from the start. You did a big no. part of your schooling at home. Yes, yes. I would always, when we go to homeschooling circles, um, everyone always asks you, so why did you start to homeschool? And our reason was because we wanted to sail around the world. So for a long time, until I was 16, I would introduce myself, hi, I'm Erika, and I'm going to sail around the world someday. <laughs> and we actually did. So that was pretty cool. Um, but for we, my dad really planned it so that um, his oldest children wouldn't be out of out of the house yet, but the youngest children would be old enough to scuba dive. So that was kind of the range that we fell in. So I was 16 when we went sailing and my youngest sister was 10. So during growing up from, uh, yeah, up until 16, we were at home homeschooling. So what did your average day look like? Did you have to wake up at a certain time, do a subject for a set amount of time, then move on and have set breaks during a day? The only things that were really very set was mathematics. So we worked through a course called Matthew C, which was really good in my opinion. But um, we didn't we didn't have subjects very formally. So what we would generally do is we would have an hour or an hour and a half of sitting around the table first thing in the morning before breakfast everyone around the table doing math and then we'd all eat breakfast and then you have the rest of the day to do your other things so we would have up until like lunch time we had to like copy a piece of piece out of a book so that would practice writing and my mom would check spelling on that and then every day would be a different book so you would one day would have a science book one day would have a biology book and we also had to read books and make summaries but we never we never did anything like um there was one stage where we had to work through a biology book but what we had to do in the same in essence was read a piece and then make a little summary of it. And that was it. We didn't have any tests on it. My mom never asked us any questions. All we had to just make a summary. Sometimes she checked the spelling of the summary, the, the structure of how the summary was written. But until I was 13 or 14, I never did any formal chemistry or physics. Um, those were all later. Oh, and we would read a lot. As a, as a family, there would be a, like two hours during the afternoon where we would all have some kind of handcraft and like I would knit and my sister drew patterns and then we would just sit and listen to my mom read books. So she had like a stack of four books that she would read a chapter out of each book every day. And that, that was that was pretty much it. I'm going to combine two questions into one. The first one is, how did you obtain a matric qualification? 
and what was the transition into tertiary education like? The matric qualification was a little bit tricky because my parents wanted to, to be able to allow us to get the matric education, uh, I mean qualification while we were sailing. Because I was 16 by the time we went sailing and my sister Francie, she was 18 by the end of the sailing trip. So that's just in the time when you kind of want to matriculate. So they tried to get a get into a system that is pretty global, but they, they wanted something that is internationally acknowledged so that we can maybe when we are in other countries actually write the exams. So they looked up and they they um, chose Cambridge because at that time there was also a lot of other homeschoolers that went with the Cambridge system. But um, there were actually not a lot of Cambridge schools in big areas like America doesn't have any Cambridge schools. New Zealand had, so we wrote in New Zealand in the end, we, I wrote some subjects there that counted towards my metric. And, yeah, there was a lot of people who's willing to help and to explain how to, you know, what subjects you need and what, what's the minimum criteria that you can kind of get away with. But in the end, I just wrote um, a couple of subjects for the, for the um, Cambridge. I wrote two A-levels and five AS levels in the end, I think. And yeah, that's basically what my metric existed, or existed of. That was... I wrote in two separate years. The first 2019, I wrote my five AS levels. In 2018, I wrote my two A levels. And that, that was my metric. Going to tertiary education felt a lot more restrictive than what I was used to homeschooling. So having to attend classes, having to um, listen to what they tell me to do was hard at first um, because I was used to learning more at my own pace. I really like the transition into lockdown because now I get to watch video lectures and pause and play like I want to. And I really enjoy this form of um, learning. So <laughs> I'm gonna find it hard to go back to varsity. The work is not easy. It was just a lot. I think that was the biggest thing actually. It was a lot. Um, a lot of you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. But it wasn't difficult, as in the work isn't that challenging, it's just a lot. That's, yeah, that was the biggest transition I had to come to terms with. And finally, what do you think are the benefits and the challenges of being home educated? I think there are a lot of benefits. But personally, I also feel they are very, very connected to who you are, um, who your family is, who you are in um, relationships with. If you don't have a stable home, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the same homeschooling. The biggest advantage I had because I homeschooled was that I could be with my family. I could learn my. I could learn to know my parents. I could have the inputs. I could. I could learn so much from them that I wouldn't have been able to learn if I had gone to a school. If I had gone to a school, I would have been very isolated, and those relationships would not have been as good. And I would have been learning things from peers that I should be learning from all the people, from people that actually know what's going on and not from people who think they know what's going on, which is often what happens in schools when you're in an age group that's really restricted. And that I've also really liked about homeschooling is that you're not in an age, you're not in a specific group, you're not in a, in a little bubble. You are, you're a lot more connected with, with what's above and what's below and how to think about things. You're, you're, you're taught to learn how to think. In school, you just, you want to fit in more, I feel. Um, but there's a big challenge if you still don't, aren't learning those things at home. So when you started at Varsity, how do you feel that you fit in with your fellow students? Some of the, some of the students I felt are really immature. I've always also started Varsity when I was a bit older, just because we went sailing and um, I came back from sailing and started Varsity a year, two years late or something late, because I mean, you can start Varsity whenever. But um, so in some senses I felt, uh, 
like I knew myself more and I was more comfortable with my with my people and also I'm a day student I don't stay at res so I don't have a, a group of people I really click with um, but I feel there's so much diversity at varsity you find people who are like you and you find people who are completely different and there are all levels of intelligence so you fit in somewhere it's not like <laughs> yeah I don't know it's not it's not difficult to fit in there are so many different types of people well I'm glad to hear that you are despite the difficulties you are enjoying your studies um, so Marika thank you very much for your time and I wish you all the best with your studies